Good morning everybody, um, please excuse the video, this is my first time ever showing a tutorial, um, so I'm kind of clueless on where to start, it's easy enough to watch them, but now I'm on the other end of it. So excuse me if I do make mistakes, but I will correct myself, um, and this will not be edited in any way, this is the video. So, um, basically you are going to need parchment paper, or in some countries I know some people call... Um, call it a uh, greaseproof paper. Um, so this is what you're going to need. Good quality too. Um, you're going to roll it out so it's flat. Also for everybody who's asking me what gel colour I use or what colouring I use, I use the um, Americolor Super Red. It's a soft gel paste food colour and I just um, put it in a little at a time to get the colour that I desire. I hope you can see this because I'm doing this all on my own and I have no clue. Um, so that is what I use. Um, I already have my cake mix ready just to make everything quicker. And I already prepared a cake yesterday so it's already ready and I won't have to um, continue to keep pausing and adding and stuff like that because as I said previously I don't want to edit the video. Um, okay, so we're going to need the cake tin. I do not use any special cake tin um, as some of you are trying to figure out what I use. It's just a big, basic, regular cake tin. Four inches deep. This is a six inch round. Um, these are very old. I got these about six years ago um, when I was living in the UK. And I got these from a store called Lakeland. And these are called push pans. But I just have regular ones. Um, so you can just use anything really. Uh, you can even use something that's uh, three inches deep if you want a taller cake. Um, so you just have to line your tin a lot more higher. Okay, so you're going to put your cake tin on the paper. And most of you do this already. Um, so it's not nothing new to you. But you do need a good quality paper because I have seen some people doing it and, you know, the paper is creased um, or it's not tall enough. You need it tall because if not... It will not guide the cake up. It will just spill over. Something edible to draw around it and trace it. I'm just using a Wilton food writer or whatever I have on hand. This does come off your tin. Okay, I'm going to try and be as quick as possible. Cut it as straight as possible. And cut your circle out. actually purchased this um, parchment paper it comes in a pack of two from um, Sam's Club in the US okay so you can just just discard this I'm just gonna fit it to the side okay so you have your round that will go into the bottom now you want to pull out another sheet I don't even measure it anymore but that's the height of the tin you actually want to cut it a lot higher maybe double Cut it as straight as possible. That's not very straight, but I'll make it work. Yeah, actually, for this cake tin, you need one and a half strip. So you're going to cut two. You are now done with that if you're only using one tin. So for the half, for the half, you are actually going to cut this in the middle. And you're going to take this sheet, your full sheet. I have a little tiny bowl of vegetable oil. I've never used any kind of other oil, so I don't know if it's gonna affect the baking of it um, or the way it's baked, but this is just a little tiny piece of tape of um, vegetable oil. And you're just gonna brush probably just a quarter of the way up. You're just gonna brush that. Also, for the round at the bottom, you were actually not going to brush that. You were going to brush the tin around the bottom. Just make sure it's evenly covered and everywhere is um, got vegetable oil on it. Because this will not stick. Okay, so I'm putting it in. I will show you in just one minute if you can't see. Because I'm not actually sure if you can see or not. It's going to be a little bit bigger than the pan, which is absolutely fine. Because you are trying not to get as many gaps as possible. 
So just make sure it's flat and I will show you that's the bottom of the tin. I am hoping that you can see this because um, I am trying to rush because I have things to do today. Um, this was not in my plans, but I thought I'd just let everybody see this. So this is the tin. As you can see, it's a little bit longer, but you just kind of push it down um, to make sure that it's flat. Try not to get creases in. If you do have one or two, it's not a big deal. I do sometimes, it's not an issue. So the part that you just put vegetable oil on, it doesn't need to be wet, just brush it on. Um, make sure it's not dripping because it's way too much. You are now going to push this into your pan. Again, try and make it as smooth as possible. We don't want creases because it makes creases in the cake. See how tall that is? And because I haven't kind of cut it exactly straight, See, if it's not sticking, then you need to put just a little bit more vegetable oil on. It will stick with no problem. But be kind of gentle. Okay, so that's one side. Again, I'm hoping you're seeing this. And then you're going to take your half, which you have here. It's going to curl up, so make sure that if it curls, because it's been on a roll, make sure it's this side that you are brushing, because the side that's curling up. So, like the inner side. So again, we're going to brush about a quarter way up. Kind of bend it a little and put it in there. And you're just going to push it down. You want it to overlap because when the cake is cooking, if it does not overlap quite a little, well, about an inch and a half, an inch and an inch and a half on each side, then the cake will come through the gap and it will spill, and it will be a fail. Um, I have done that before, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I have done it, um, but this is what you want. The cake is not gonna be this tall at all, um, but it's gonna be around this height. So, the one I made earlier, I actually didn't make enough batter because I was um, trying to rush so I could have one prepared for you, um, but it's still the same effect. And this extra piece, just keep it for your next 16th round. Okay, so I made a point of saying um, in my written instructions that uh, make sure that when you pour your cake batter, it goes central. You want it to be central, central as much as possible, um, because the, the middle part of it is what uh, is the most important, because that's the most difficult to cook. The cake starts cooking from the outside in. So um, this is just what I've kind of figured out over the years of making cakes. Um, so if you put that in first and just let it spill to the edges, I already have my cake batter ready, so I am just going to get this, it probably needs another mix, so I'm going to give it a quick mix. And this actually is red velvet, um, and if you see, this is a very heavy bowl, it's glass. Um, if you see, there is a few little lumps in there, not a big deal, they will disperse when cooking. Um, this is one of my most liked recipes for people that I make cakes for. Um, so I'm just going to tip this in and try and make sure it's as central as possible. If not, it's not a problem. This is so awkward for me right now. This is a heavy bowl and I'm trying to make sure that you guys see it. So... There we go. It's a little difficult because the paper's so tall. I haven't got a lot out of this out of here actually I've still got quite a bit in here so let me make sure I get the rest of it it doesn't matter if, it, if some drips on the sides it's absolutely normal so my next thing is I bang my tin I have been asked why I bang it 10 to 15 times cake batter is not thin it should not be runny it should be a thicker consistency not too thick where, you know, it doesn't run, but um, you when you mix it, so much air gets incorporated. You've got to think the air bubbles from the bottom has to rise to the top. So yes, I bang my tin 10 to 15 times. Um, if I have a 12 inch cake, then I'll bang, bang it about 20 times. If I'm still seeing air bubbles coming up, um, coming to the surface, then I will continue to bang it until they start going away. A few of them are fine, but you don't want a lot because when the cake is cooked and you cut it, you're going to see all these holes. 
It's not attractive um, and it means there's way too much air. Then you lose moisture. So I'm gonna bang my chin, excuse the noise. I think that was around 16 times. It's gonna be difficult for me to show you this, um, but the cake mix, I can't even show you because it's gonna spill out, is up to here. It's up to here. Don't be scared, it's not gonna spill because you have your good quality parchment paper. It guides the cake up to the top. Um, so you are now ready to put this in the oven. In the oven. This one I actually is a six inch, four inches deep, the pan. Um, I actually bake this at 350 for 50 minutes exactly. Um, so I'm about to put this in the oven. Give me a second please. Okay, so when your cake is done and it's cooling, this one is actually still a little warm, but I can touch it. Um, you need to actually cool on a cooling tray that has a gap at the bottom. It doesn't have to have much of a gap, mine hasn't, but it needs to have a gap because you want some air to circulate around the bottom as your cake is cooling. Um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because um, if it doesn't, the bottom of the cake will get kind of soggy because the heat is not escaping from the bottom and then it can make the cake, uh, it, can, it can make it dry depending on what flavour you're cooking. It can either make it very dry or it can make it very wet and you just want your cake moist. You don't want it wet where it's going to... Um, where when you, when you like cut it or something, it's going to kind of drip off. Not drip off, but um, it will start flaking. Um, you don't want that. So just get something that's going to be lifted off the counter or the table, whatever you're working on. And um, so that some of the air and the heat, you want air to circulate and you want the heat to circulate around the cake as it's cooling. Um, this one, like I said, is still a little warm, but we're going to see if it's going to work. Because I don't usually touch my cakes until they have completely cooled. Um, the only time I will touch them, and as you can see, this one isn't as tall, but I showed you guys um, a taller version, because it's up to you how much mix you want to put in. Um, but this one is four, this one's five inches tall. Um, so, you can see it's risen above, but it, this one has domed slightly, not too much, it's not a problem. So, um... When it's cool to the touch, it probably needs to be a little bit cooler than this, but um, I've made it so many times I don't even keep track anymore. Uh, and I do this method with all of my cakes, not just the red velvet or the strawberry, uh, with every single one. So um, I make sure it's like this. When it's cool to the touch or just slightly warm, this is what I do. I put my hand in and I lift the lid off. The lid will just slide off. Um, sorry, not the lid, the cake mix. Um, <laughs> cake tin. Um, this will just slide off. You just take the paper off. I usually sit it in the tin until I'm finished. You have a moist cake already. And I sit it upside down to cool. Um, and then when it's cooled, let me just get something to wipe my hands because I have done. Okay, so, um, like I said, this cake is still warm, but I'm going to cut it so that you can see, look at that height, look at the height on that, look at the height, and as you can see, I've got red dye on my counter now, wonderful, so I'm going to be scrubbing that later, so I'm going to cut this, so that you can see, oh, no, not the red dye. Let me just get the correct knife. Okay, I'm just going to use this one. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to cut it so that you can see. No hole in the cake, as some of you thought there would be. Um, I do not use a flour nail. I use nothing like that, but this is the cake. It's so, so very moist. 
And I've just made this one just to show you, but look, it's so moist. You can see, one second, I'm just gonna wipe my hands, and I'm hoping that you can see um, how moist the actual middle of the cake is. Um, I'm gonna make a mess right now. Maybe I can do it on here. Just do it on here. Um, you can see how moist the cake is. You can see it on my fingers. It's moist, so moist. And when I break it, it doesn't just crumble. You see that? But leave your cake, I know I haven't, but leave your cake to fully cool. Um, the center is completely done. There we go, it's completely cooked. Very moist, very fluffy, as you can see. Very moist and very fluffy, it's spongy. And that literally is my method. Um, I haven't, that's, I mean, I don't do anything special, I don't do anything extra. This is just my method and it seems to work. Um, and I've got red dye on my camera. <laughs> um, so I hope that this helps you. And if you have any questions, please, please, please message me. Um, I have no problem with answering messages or anything like that. For the past three days, I've had a lot of trouble uploading on Facebook. Um, I mean, I can do a post, but I can't upload photos or links in the thread um, under the comments. So uh, I think my husband wants me to upload this to YouTube. So I will certainly share the link. And I hope that this was a good tutorial and that you could see everything I was doing. Um, and thank you so much for being so supportive. And see you next time. Uh, oh, and like my Facebook page, please, if you don't mind. Wamika's Custom Cakes. Thank you. Bye.